Hi, I'm Cheryl Morales of the Newport News Tourism Office, and welcome to What's New in Newport News. Any idea where I might be today? Well, here's a clue. Look at these arachnids. The size of these are incredible. And you're going to learn so much more about arachnids. Stay tuned. What's New is next. Yep, we're here at the Virginia Living Museum to explore their new exhibit, The Art and Science of Arachnids. And yeah, take a look at behind me here. That's one large spider. That's one of different types of arachnids that we're going to be exploring. I know some of you might be feeling the way that I felt, a little squeamish, but after learning more about them, exploring this exhibit, I have come to find them fascinating. I have Fred Ferris with me right now, and he's gonna be telling us more about this exhibit, and I have to ask you, Fred, why shouldn't I be squirmish when it comes to these things? <laughs> well, you shouldn't be. I mean, spiders really are our friends, and they are so common. There are 40,000 species of spiders around the world. They've been here since the dinosaur age. We're not gonna get rid of spiders, so we need to become friends with them. And they're so common that when you take a walk in the woods, uh, there's about a million spiders per acre. But they're eating insects. They're eating 80 pounds of insects a year in that acre field. So if you took them away from the world, we would starve because of the insects they kill. So spiders truly are our friends, and there aren't that many dangerous ones. Here in the United States, of the 3,000 spiders, types of spiders, uh, so only, I think, four people a year die in the United States from spider bites, so you're 10 times more likely to die from lightning than from a spider. So hopefully you will get a little more comfortable as you walk around this exhibit. You'll just see how fascinating they are, I and mean, they really need more respect and friends around the world. Arachnids. What a funny name. <laughs> really, you know, it's a very strange name for a strange creature, I guess. Mm -hmm. But tell me how that name came about. Yeah, it goes back to Greek mythology, and it is an unusual name. But there was, a, a as the story goes, a young girl, daughter of a sheep herder named Arachne. And uh, she was a weaver, so she made rugs and tapestries and stuff. And she was apparently extremely talented. So the villagers were always complimenting her and saying, man, you're a fantastic weaver. Uh, so in the course of time, her head began to swell a bit, so she began to boast that she was the best weaver in the world. In fact, she said, I could beat the gods in weaving, and she contested, tried to contest the gods to come compete with her in the weaving contest. Well, Athena, the god of wisdom, decided to punish her for all that boasting and arrogance and turned her into a spider. So the rest of her life, she lived as a spider. She was able to weave and could have a big head if she wanted, but she was now a spider. So scientists took that arachne, the name of the young girl who was turned into a spider, they took that name and made it the scientific name for the group arachnids. So that's how it came about. And spiders do have beautiful webs with yeah, their they weaving do. and all. They it's really gorgeous. do. Yeah. yeah, just a little bit about, I brought a little fake friend along. Okay. Um, <laughs> just to help you see what a spider is. I mean, they're, unlike insects, they only have two body parts. Insects have three, so two body parts. They have a bunch of legs four on one side and four on the other. So they have eight legs, you know, insects have six. Um, and there's usually no antenna, no wings. So that's basically it for a spider. Now sometimes you'll see a couple of parts coming off the top you might think are antenna, but those are actually mouth parts and not antenna. So two body parts, eight legs, that's the spider group. But they're not all spiders. So in our exhibit we have 100 plus live animals, live arachnids. Some are scorpions, some are called whip scorpions or vinegar runes. Whip, because they have this whip-like tail that shoots out vinegar. Um, and then there are daddy long legs, uh, mites and ticks. Those are all arachnids. You won't see all those in this exhibit because we focused on the main ones, the scorpions, the tarantulas, and the main spiders. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Fred, what are the logistics of getting the animals here and setting this up? I mean, do they arrive by UPS? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Um, most of our exhibits come by tractor trailer, so big trucks moving it across the country. This actually came from a science center in Indiana. It left in an ice storm. So the truck left with all the exhibit elements you see, but not the spiders. You know, they can't really travel in a frozen tractor trailer truck. 
So two of the keepers who came with the exhibit to help us set it up um, packed the spiders up. There's a hundred of them, so they had to each be individually packaged in a small container and then put in boxes and then taken in a heated van from Indiana through the snowstorm all the way to Newport News. Uh, and then a couple of days later, we were able to unpack them from their small containers and put them back on exhibit. But every day we have to miss the exhibit. They need a certain moisture level. They have to be fed crickets once a week. So there's a lot of care in uh, taking care of these 100 plus arachnids. How many employees are working then for? We have a team of uh, six people who are taking turns behind the scenes uh, feeding and taking care of them. And how long is this here for? It runs through April 10th, right through spring break. So you have plenty of time to come see and get acquainted with arachnids. and. Face your fears if you're one of those arachnophobia folks. Uh, just come here, take a look, you'll be fascinated. Well, like the big spider that is behind me here, this is a, one of a few interactive exhibits that the kids can actually play. Can you describe this one? Yeah, this is, we named her Arachne after the legend, and uh, she's like a 20-foot spider, uh, which is an orb weaver, kind of like Charlotte's Web. Sp spider that we all grew up reading the book about. That's a bigger version of the Charlotte Web Spider. And it's here for kids to climb around underneath. They can make a web like Charlotte did and just be underneath a spider and kind of help get rid of those fears. Along with the interactive ones, there are three separate cube exhibits, um, color-coded. Uh, tell us about those. Yep, they all, each of them have about 30 plus live spiders in each one, but they're themed. So the purple one is about arts, spiders in the arts, uh, which you may not immediately come to mind how that's connected, but let's take music, for example. We all grew up with Itsy Bitsy Spider. Oh, that's right, yes. And uh, know the hand motions, and that's still a popular preschool song. That's common actually around the world. It has different names, but it's sung and carried on throughout all countries almost. Uh, and other music, there's lots of songs named after spiders, but also many of the spider experts like music. So when they discover a new spider, they often name them after music artists. So there's one named after John Lennon, there's one after Johnny Cash, there's one after Pink Floyd, Frank Zappa. So you no, can I see don't. all those connections uh, in that part of the exhibit. But Johnny Cash has a, a, na has a, spider, a spider named <laughs> after him. That's so interesting. So that's music, but uh -huh. then there's film. And of course, King Kong in the 30s was the first one to feature a big spider. And then recently, King Kong came back again uh, and of course, now we have Spider-Man, which is one of the favorites of all time. So lots of spiders in films. And then you go to literature. I mean, they're in all the books. And of course, Charlotte's Web, 1952, was a really unusual book because it starred a spider. Uh, the publishing company got really nervous right before it was published. They said, people are going to revolt and be scared. They're not going to read this book. He had to convince them that no spiders are friendly. He was not a big spider lover when he wrote that book initially, but he came to really respect them. And here it became probably the most beloved children's book of all times. Still so, is. Yep, Absolutely. still is. Yes. So that's the arts cube. Ah, very good. So that, that would be the purple. That's the purple. Okay, so now we go to the blue. The blue, which is in culture. And um, it's, you know, spiders in our culture, you may not think in present day culture, do we really have spider connections? Well, think about the internet. Oh, the internet. WWW on the internet, World Wide Web. Web. There, there we you go. go. And yes. then Web of Life in biology and ecology. You know, we always use that theme for interconnectedness. And so it's everywhere in our culture. And then you go to folk tales around the world. And Anasi, which is an African folk tale legend, is common throughout the continent. It's a very friendly, smart spider storyteller uh, that's just throughout the African legends. Uh, the Jewish have spider legends in their culture, the Muslims in theirs. Very similar stories, just different names. It's the Indians of the Southwest. So you go around the world and spiders have always been key in the legends. Always is a sort of benevolent, smart, tricky animal that, that helps us on our way. I'm going to add this in there. I know it's not prevalent in our culture, but in others, it is a delicacy. It yep. is something that's that part of the part culture of that we yes. don't get along with here in the United States. You've heard of eating insects, and we had a bug exhibit long, long ago. Oh, I remember. Yes. We ate insects yes. on the opening night, just to say we did. Okay. Uh, I, have <laughs> not eaten a, I have not eaten a spider yet, but they're actually around the world, very common food item. In South America, they actually cook out with tarantulas over the fire. Uh, we don't do that here yet, but 
yet we'll eat a lobster, okay. we'll eat a blue crab, yes. we'll eat a shrimp. Those are all kind of related to spiders. We don't think that's weird, no, but we somehow don't. crunching down on a tarantula, or a it just doesn't. No. <laughs> but, but we've got the recipes here, so if you're that bold and want to test one out, you can check out our recipes. And I hear even your gift store. Might we be might have something thing. there you can yes. test. Yep. Very good. And then there's the third cube, and that's green. Yeah, the green cube right behind us here is the science one, more on the you know, technical parts of it. You know, what is an arachnid, like we talked about, the, it'll showcase some of the differences between the arachnids. Also about the poisonous spiders that I mentioned, it gives some facts about that. The two poisonous spiders in the United States are the brown recluse spider and the black widow spider. But that's only two out of 3,000 types of spiders in the U.S., so they're not common. Uh, black widows are actually very common here in Newport News and in our region. Um, we see them all the time, but they're very secretive, very reclusive. You never really see them in a dangerous situation and hardly ever are in danger of getting bitten by one. So they despite like those dark places, yeah. you know, where you usually aren't a part of. So I mean, four deaths a year in the United States. Uh, the whole by United States. Whole United yeah. States, and we've got black widows almost everywhere in Newport News. So that tells you. They're not out to get us. They're out there eating insects and doing their own thing. So that's in the science cube. And then just some technical things about um, tarantulas and in medicine. You know, they've played a key role in medicine, which is surprising. In cancer, they use an Israeli spider, it has a venom which has this unusual characteristic of clinging on to cancer cells. So they can send that venom in with a fluorescent dye and it will actually attack, not attack, but just attach to tumors and they can zoom in on their cameras and find cancer active areas in your body thanks to spider venom. Spiders. So, so all kinds of, it's just another example of why you need to protect all species of life. You never know when they're gonna come back to help save humans in some way. They just have all these unusual traits and chemicals that we've yet to discover uses for. So don't step on don't them. Don't step on them, no. or if you do, inside your house, but maybe not outside your house. There you go. Yeah, that's your <laughs> limit, and yeah. that's theirs, that's you know, exactly. just to help us out. That's great. Well, it is amazing how these creatures are an inter integral part of our, you know, culture, our lives. Um, we have just touched basis of what this exhibit has to offer. So tell me, we're going to be having Jim Drummond come. What is he going to be talking to us about? Yeah, he's one of our lead educators and part of who helped set up the show. He'll be sharing you. There's many more interactives around the exhibit he'll be telling you about. And then probably the most fun thing of all is the live arachnids that we have here. We have some ambassador animals that we bring out to share with the public so they can touch some of them and see them up close. And Jim will be sharing those with you in just a few minutes. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks again for being yeah, with thank us. thank you. We'll be right back. I didn't put it on you. I don't like yeah. spiders and snakes. And they so. want to taste to love. This is actually a hissing cockroach. You can touch it if you would like. All right, very good, very good. Let's give our volunteer a big hand. I will bring, this is the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Okay, welcome back. We have Jim Drummond here, and our show just got real interesting because he brought some buddies with him. Well, Jim, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for coming here that part of this exhibit is to have what referred to as ambassador animals, arachnids that will help maybe ease some people's squeamishness around some of these animals, that spiders, snakes, neither one of those are a lot of people's friends, but they're helpful to all of us, and so we have these animals to promote. I've got here an animal that's a, it's in the scorpion group, but it's, not got a stinger. This is called a vinegaroon. It is a whip scorpion is its common name and I'm actually able to hold it in my hand because it won't hurt me. It's got okay. small pinchers and because it's got small pinchers it can't do much to defend itself because it doesn't have that bulb stinger. It can't do much venom-wise to defend itself. So the reason it got the vinegar rune is it has the ability to spray out acetic acid, the main ingredient of vinegar. So if this were to be agitated, 
I would smell like vinegar. Uh, so, okay, that's I the see. Worst that could happen. There you go. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. So, I see that there are two body parts. I see that there are the yes. eight legs. That a lot of people don't realize these are legs. They do resemble antenna because they're very thin, but they technically are walking. I can see legs. him walking. Yep, with you. Okay, so now we have. There is there any other classification for an arachnid? That that's the the what will Mean distinguish two. them between the insects and the arachnids is the two instead of three body parts and okay. the eight instead eight of eight six. Okay. six legs. Very They good. also don't have antenna, they don't have wings. Not every insect has wings, but most of them do and most of them have antenna. If you see antenna or wings, it cannot be an arachnid. Very good. Is this as big as it will This get is about half even? grown. It's about so half grown. It will get it will get larger. And where and would it live? This one is not in Virginia, but you can find it in the southwest of the U.S. Of the United States. Oh, yes. interesting. Okay. Very good. That there is a scorpion that's in Virginia. We don't have one as part of this exhibit, but there is one in the southwestern part of Virginia as well. Now, I did learn that you are a Scorpius, so I have a... <laughs> Scorpion. Thank you. An emperor scorpion. Yes, I was born in November, so. <laughs> and here we it's go. It's got all the classic parts that you expect to see the large pinchers, the bulb with the venom, the stinger part on the tail side. Not every scorpion has as powerful pinchers as this. This is the one that gets the largest if you go by mass. If you go by length, the forest scorpion to get a little bit longer, but this guy is the biggest. Cool thing about scorpions and the way that makes it so easy for people to find them out in the desert southwest, they glow under UV. Oh. So if you're hunting scorpions, you just walk out at night with an ultraviolet light. And there's one. You just pick it up and and it's like. How is glowing under UV uh, gonna help you? It took them a long time to figure that out. And what they have come to the conclusion is the scorpion will get UV off of the moon. And if it can feel that it's glowing, cause they can tell when they're glowing, it's like, oh, something can see me. I will go back in my hidey hole and not come out tonight and hunt. Oh. Because if something can see me, something might catch me and eat me. What would it be its enemy? That larger uh, animals like, uh, well, other scorpions could do it, but you th have things out like a fox or raccoon, ah. depending on where you are. Huh? So there are small mammals that would eat these. Not many birds, because they're typically out at night, but. How would they avoid being stung then? The if, you're, if you come in from the back, the stinger only goes forward. Okay. That, and animals will know that. And so the scorpion will turn around to face you so that, yeah, I know you're there. I, and if you move, it'll move around. But if you come in quick, you got it. Okay. That uh, this is. And what does it feed on? Pretty much anything smaller than itself. Okay. So it would eat other scorpions that we feed it crickets here, but it, it's good on eating a lot of insects. Okay. And so it'll just crush them with the claws and then stick it in the mouth. So these are found in the United States? They are. You find them in the southern tier states like Texas and uh, Arizona, New Mexico. Now another good ambassador is our tarantula. Absolutely. Most of the arachnids we have on exhibit, out of the 163 are spiders. Out of those 63, 60 are tarantulas. Wow. I didn't realize there was that many different kinds of tarantulas. This is the Mexican red need, very popular in the pet trade. They are doing very well as far as captive breeding and supplying non out of the wild caught, which is good because in the wild they're not doing as well. They're losing habitat. The reason they're so popular is they're pretty. The, the red, it, it's orange to me, but they call it red need. Um, it makes it showy uh -huh. and it's extremely docile. Yeah. It will pretty much, if you were to pick it, set it in your hand, it would pretty much sit there. 
so you could easily have it and not be dangerous to humans. The, if it were to bite, which is extremely rare, it's still not going to, oh, okay. I will say it won't hurt because it will, but being stung by a bee will hurt. Mm -hmm. If you're not allergic, it's just going to hurt. And so they're docile and it's not a potent venom. So it makes it a, a popular spider to have because it will get big and showy. Well, why is it becoming extinct? Well, it's not that it's becoming extinct, but their numbers are going down because the habitat is people that got to live somewhere. I see. And so they decided that's a good place to live. Okay, okay. Poisonous, venomous. Right? A lot what? of people use those as interchangeable words, and they're not. All spiders are venomous. All spiders. But it's only a, a couple bit. that are medically significant here in the U.S. Just the black widow and the brown recluse here in Virginia. There you go. And so you don't have to worry about spiders killing you. Well, we also heard that they're also using that venom for medical purposes. They are. They're looking at taking venom and making a new painkiller. One of the big problems, not just this area, but all throughout the U.S. is opioid addiction. Mm. Venom can be produce a painkiller that is not addictive. So once they get that perfected, now we'll have a substitute. That pain management is something that needs to happen, that people need to be able to live pain free, but you also don't want to be addicted to your painkiller. And so if they can replace an addictive one for a non-addictive one. Are opiates, are they chemicals that humans have developed? They were natural chemicals in plants, but we in have plants. taken okay. that chemical and then made the drugs out of it for painkillers, where here it, the venom is a natural, now it's not necessarily a, it wasn't intended as a painkiller for the spider, it, it mobilizes the prey. So you don't want enough to immobilize, right, you right. want to be able to function, <laughs> Yes. but it can, they can dose it, scale it down to where it is now a pain reliever. So that's what they're working on perfecting and getting that, which is quite beneficial. That's something that we'll need now. Multiple sclerosis, MS. Yes. I also was reading about that. Tell us more about that, because that, that was fascinating. There are new drugs coming out, and again, they're looking at what, what something that's in spider, that that's a neurotoxin that we have, and different spiders have different toxins. And so the neurotoxin can be used because they're looking at the connections between the the myelin in, in the, going in down the nervous system from the brain to the spinal cord, and if those myelin sheaths get damaged, then the nerves don't talk to each other, the communication doesn't go both ways. Yes. And so if you can now use that technology to prevent the damage, because so it's, it's- Save the spiders. Save the, save the spiders. The spiders are your friends. Yes. Many people don't think that, but it's, it's true. Well, we learned more about the um, web interactive exhibit here, and I know that there are others. Can you describe some of them for us? It started out as a folk tale, and then with the Tarantella dance, someone got bit by a spider, a wolf spider. They don't actually have tarantulas in Italy. They were told they had to dance to work up enough sweat to sweat out the venom, and so this poor person had to dance all night long. And they lived. Ah. So, okay, now they, ah, right, this is gonna cure us anytime. All you gotta do is do this dance. But it's evolved now from a folk cure to now a folk dance. And so they do the Tarantella as a folk dance. So it's part of their culture now to do this dance. Tarantello, how, how did that name come about? It's close to tarantula and ah, so. Ah, gotcha, okay, very good. So you have the opportunity to learn There that is dance. a little screen that has the uh, miniature dance floor, so you, you hear the music and the instructor is demonstrating the steps. I am not coordinated enough to do that, but you know, <laughs> I'll watch anybody that wants to try. Now, throughout the time that this is going to be here, uh, there'll be an opportunity to see up front, up close, alive. 
Every a Saturday rocket, we right? do have the Ambassador Animals doing yes. a program a couple of times. We do it at, at 11 in the morning and at 1 in the afternoon. So that'll be every Saturday. And then there'll be other times when one just may be out on the floor. But you know on Saturdays at 11 and 1, they're going to be here. You'll see the Ambassador Animals. And so up front, up close. Up close yep. and personal. There you go. Maybe even crawling across your hand if you're so inclined. Ah, good for them. The one of the things that I've referred people from here if they wanted to see one of the medically significant spiders, we do have a black widow on exhibit downstairs in the world of darkness. Ah, so the downstairs, the world of darkness. Now that, that brings us to the museum itself because this is just a, in a sense, a smaller exhibit of the big picture here. Tell us about what other than the black widow spider that you just told us about, the other parts that are here at the museum. Well, in, a, in addition to the, the world of darkness where they do have the nocturnal animals or things that like to hide where it's dark, we do have a swamp exhibit so you can see what's out in the swamps. We do have a mountain cove that the mountains are really popular with a lot of people. And so that coolness has different animals because it's a different habitat. For the big guys, you head out to the trail. It's a beautiful nature trail. It really is. And you can see the animals, but also um, different spe species of trees. We do have some identified with an orange sticker, and it'll be a den of trees, so you can look at those. That We not only promote animals and highlight those, but also the plants that make up Virginia. That we do encourage native species a couple of times a year. We'll have a native plant sale to try to get people locally to plant yeah. what's native. Right. It takes less work and less water, so put the stuff that's supposed to grow here. Yes. And a popular attraction for the shorter set is our permanent dinosaur trail mm -hmm. that they, they get a kick out of that. So now you can come any day and see dinosaurs. You don't have to wait for it to be the right year for the summers. And this is the right year of the summers for the dinosaurs to come. Very good. But they can see them at any time. And also green and not the color. That right? we have a array of solar panels on the roof that we have here that are trying to reduce our footprint. We have a green building over in the conservation garden that talks about things you can do like switching from incandescent lights and we've done that throughout lighting in the museum as something goes it gets replaced first it was with the cfls now it's with the led LEDs. and so yes. we're we're actually practicing what we preach yeah <laughs> we're not just saying you should do it that we are doing it too and we'll show you how we'll encourage you to do that that we're one of the steps on the stops on the solar tour each each spring. So Jim, tell us again, how long is this exhibit going for? This will go through April 10th, and so you, you have time to come by. If you need to work up your nerves slowly, you can. And uh, it's I think it's a very well done exhibit that it has not just science, but it also has the art featured. We've got the photographs on the back wall, that the macro photograph that you may not recognize as parts of a spider. Mm. What is your website? The, T-H-E-V-L-M dot O-R-G. Very good. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today and giving us a whole new appreciation for arachnids, spiders, and such. Thank you. And I want to thank you for joining us. To find out th more about this and all the great things that you can see and do in Newport News, you can always check out our website as well, newport-news.org. Thanks again.